When most people think about the feelings that are buried in their clutter, they think about shame or overwhelm or frustration, stress. They don't often think about the fear that comes with thinking about the end of our lives. I know that this is not going to be the funniest of videos, but it's a really, really important topic to discuss. When we are looking at our clutter, oftentimes we are thinking about the end of our lives. We're thinking about how I don't want to leave this for my kids to have to manage, or how am I going to deal with this as I get older, or I could trip and fall and break a hip. These are real things. And so as we are looking at our clutter, we're also facing our mortality. And that is scary and it's overwhelming. And I think that when we don't talk about it, it makes it more scary because the things we we don't talk about feel more real to us. So as an organizer, I like to lean into the sword and I like to talk about the things that are uncomfortable because as much as you may not want to have this conversation, this conversation will make it less scary. It will make it feel less real and it will actually really crystallize the things that are real that require us to take action. So this week in the chaos to calm community, we are doing a special class about wills and estate paperwork. We are jumping in and it's not even like a class to be honest because I'm not some sort of lawyer, but what I want is space and time for you to work on the things that are going to help you move through your life with more ease and less stress. Almost every single client that I have has some sort of box or folder that says will on it or estate planning. And this is really scary, especially if you have kids, if you haven't done that yet. And it can be really overwhelming to confront it because again, we're facing our mortality and we're facing the legal system, both of which are not very fun. So I just wanna name that. It's not just the overwhelm and the shame that's built into your clutter. There's also this feeling of mortality and fear and end of life. Let's just name that all of us feel a little uncomfortable. I think it's just built into how humans are built to not really wanna face the end of our lives. And so when we look at our clutter, oftentimes those shadows are always right underneath us waiting to pounce. And so what we want to do is we want to really take the time to acknowledge those feelings. It is scary. It is frustrating. It is not something that any of us want to face. We all want to be young and healthy and free and vibrant and joyful. Yes, totally. And there's nothing wrong with making a plan for what happens to your stuff when you pass away or what happens to your home or what happens to your children if something were to happen to you. I guess I don't even really have some big tip to share. My tip is it's okay to feel the discomfort that this clutter awakens in us about the end of our lives. And it's okay to take time to work on creating strategies and systems that will make us feel better about when that happens. And ideally doing it with people who are not afraid to talk about it and not afraid to face it can be really helpful because sometimes if we try to have these discussions with our loved ones, it gets stressful because nobody wants to think about their parent passing away or something happening. I remember talking to someone and saying I was about to have a surgery and I said, oh, if something were to happen to me and I gave the instructions and they said, well, nothing's going to happen to you. I hope not. I really hope not. But in case something did, I wanted to be ready. Again, I'm not sitting here manifesting the negative things to happen in my life, but what I want to do is just feel a sense of peace that if something were to happen to me, I would have a plan in place. And again, that can be very confrontational. So I want to do two things. I want to first and foremost say, if this is one of the feelings that's buried in your clutter, you are not alone. There's nothing wrong with you. It's a big thing to hold space for. And you do not have to be alone when you do it. You are always welcome to come join us in the Chaos to Calm community. You are always welcome to just, you know, watch this video a hundred times, but just know that you are not alone. And this is a very normal reaction. It is just basically how our human bodies are built to kind of reject the idea of the end of life. So that's one part. The second part is it's okay to make a plan of action and it doesn't have to be perfect. It does not have to be perfect at all. Just set the wheels in motion. Do one thing today towards creating an end of life plan. Gather up all of your items related to your will or order a book online that will help you get a little clarity or call that lawyer that your friend recommended and set up an appointment. Take one small action today that gives you a little bit of support in moving forward in facing the things that need to be done just because we're not confronting it and working on it doesn't mean it's going to stop it from happening. And if that's adding a level of stress and anxiety and overwhelm to you in addition to the clutter stress, it's worth doing one small thing today. I know clutter can be a big confront, but please know that you are not alone. 
there are many of us who are walking this path and making sense of it and trying to be there for ourselves emotionally while navigating the challenges that we face. As a single person with no kids, it's challenging to look at my items and think to myself, who's going to want this when I die? What do I do with it? And at what point do I let it go? Because I am holding on to certain things in my life because they feel so important to me. But the truth is, my family line ends with me. Nobody's going to want my yearbooks or my cheerleading outfit. So at what point do I need to start making decisions about what happens to the stuff in my life? And again, this is where it goes into a much more splintered, bigger emotional issue because it brings up feelings that we have about the circumstances in our lives, the things that we love and are going to miss, the things that we feel uncomfortable about or don't prefer that we're living and experiencing. So what we want to do is instead of ignoring these things and pretending like they don't exist, we want to just name them. We want to hold space for them. I want to remind you that it's okay to feel complicated things when it comes to getting organized. It's okay to want to bury your head in the sand. It's not okay to continue doing that forever. You can do it a little bit, but then come on back. And if you feel like you need a little extra support, come join us in the Chaos to Comp community. It does help to have people around you who are working on the same path as you are without shame, without judgment or frustration just to be able to show up and do the best you can today moving forward with a clutter-free life in the best possible way that you can. All right, so I know this was not the most refined tip I've ever offered, but I think it was a really important point to make and just to name that it's hard and there's a lot that's buried in our clutter and this is one of those things. So I'm glad you're here. I'm grateful you stayed and are watching this still. Please follow me for more tips and organizing tricks and comment below if there's anything hiding in your clutter that you're feeling overwhelmed about. I would love to cheer you on and just give you a little bit of support as you're navigating the complexities of getting organized. Thanks so much for being here. Mm -hmm.